This is the Kylin M gimbal I found on Indiegogo back in April. It's finally arrived. $350, which seems super cheap, but is it actually any good? So just a little bit of background, I bought a Glidecam three years ago now. It took me a while to get used to it, but I absolutely love the thing now, and I feel like I get some great stuff out of it. I've used gimbals in the past, such as Ronin's, but I've never really felt the need for it because of my Glidecam, and I liked not having to rely on batteries. But I came across this Kylin on Indiegogo back in April, and it looked pretty impressive because of a few different features, such as being able to turn the handle and have it on top of the rig, as well as below. And the fact that you can charge your camera from the gimbal itself, which is a massive bonus when you're working with Sony cameras and the batteries suck. So getting onto the product, it's a really nice presented product, as you can see by the box with a handle, very Apple-esque like. And then inside the box is a black case with an orange trim. This is where you will keep your gimbal when you're not using it. It keeps your gimbal nice and protected with foam lining inside. The case isn't that big, which is great because it means it's easy to keep it stored away when you're not using it. And I could potentially keep it in my car and quite well hidden. So what do you get in the box? Two batteries, one battery charger, a camera control cable for my A7R. I had to choose that specifically for my camera. There are other options available. A tripod for my gimbal to stand on and a phone holder that I believe was at an additional cost. But I thought it'd be great to be able to use my phone on this gimbal as well as my mirrorless camera. Setting up the camera straight out of the box was not that much fun, to be honest. You're not gonna find an instruction manual in the case so you're kind of left to your own wit to figure it out. In all honesty, I ended up looking on YouTube for some kind of tutorial as to how to get this thing to stand on my tripod as it kept tipping over. So there's a screw on the handle which you need to twist and unlock and then you can slowly rotate the handle. I think it's 180 degrees and it will make it vertical which means it can now stand up on the tripod. Man, that sounds complicated. It kind of was, but once you get the hang of it, it's it's pretty simple stuff. The tripod is actually really handy for balancing your cameras on the gimbal, as you don't need to hold on to the gimbal whilst you're balancing. So it frees up another hand, basically. It makes everything a lot easier. I think it would kind of make sense if the tripod had more of a socket with a lock so that you didn't have to always screw the tripod into the bottom of the gimbal to make it stand up. As I did work out that you can just leave the tripod screwed into the bottom of the gimbal at all times as long as you're not worried about it taking up extra space. Via another YouTube video, I was encouraged to download the Snopper app. Once I'd done that, everything became a lot clearer. There's a great little quick start guide on the app which takes you through the process, through balancing, through the control cable and the control panel. I just don't understand why there wasn't anything in the actual box which could kind of point me in the right direction. It was a bit strange. It took me about 20 minutes to actually get connected to the app with the gimbal, and it just it just felt like a waste of time to me, but it's, it's teething problems. So in the app, you'll see four different strength settings. Each strength setting is for different types of cameras, such as your phone, which is super light, or your mirrorless camera or DSLR, which is bound to be heavier. You wanna try and work out the best strength setting for the weight of your camera to get the best results. The app gives you lots of added features, such as being able to control the gimbal, panorama options, as well as motion time-lapse, which I'm especially looking forward to using. This means that you can start your time-lapse looking east, for example, and end it looking west, and get an awesome time-lapse looking across the whole view. In the parameters settings menu, it's here that you control power supply to the camera. You can change the strength of your pan and tilt, adjust your horizontal and vertical levels, and calibrate. So after I was all set up, I took out my new gimbal to a few locations, and here's what I got. So it's been quite a big learning curve getting the best out of this gimbal, and by no means do I think I've got the best out of it so far. 
But I would say the same thing happened with my Glycam. When I picked up my Glycam, I really didn't understand quite how to get the best out of it. And now that it's been a few years, I actually feel I get some great stuff out of it, and I have no doubt the same will happen with this gimbal. I did have a few problems with the gimbal though that I haven't kind of worked out so far, such as the gimbal struggling with the weight of the front end of my camera whilst I was running, and a few vibration issues with my iPhone. My opinion right now is that I would probably just rather use my Glycam as I don't have to rely on batteries and technology and setting up with my phone. But at the same time, I can see massive benefits of owning a small gimbal. For example, my Glycam is quite big and this gimbal is about half the size. So it means I can get shots such as putting my gimbal through a car window. I just wouldn't be able to do that with my Glycam because it's too big. It's kind of working out the shots to use your gimbal for. It's you don't want to use your gimbal for the sake of it, you want to use it for particular things which give you something different in your work. This is the first ever Kylin M, so of course there's going to be some teething issues. It is a great product though, the presentation in the boxes is really nice and the build quality of the product itself is great. But at the same time it does kind of still feel like a toy rather than professional camera equipment. Nonetheless, I still think I will get some great stuff out of it and I'm definitely sure I'll be using it on shoots in the future. But I don't know, it's gonna be interesting to see in three years time, for example, how much I love this thing. Am I gonna love it as much as my Glycam? Will I even use my Glycam anymore? If you're interested in seeing my Glycam video from three years ago, which seems pretty scary now, you can see it here. But in the meantime, please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe as it really helps me with creating this content.